During the water crisis, I was nine months pregnant. I was having contractions and I had to travel an hour just to get water to wash myself. Sometimes there's moments in life where time just slows down and you think like, wow, what, what happened that day? And in 2014, Lake Erie, um, Toledo area had a complete shutdown of their water system for three days. There was a, a bloom of cyanobacteria that released toxins and it reached the intake well. And, and I'll never forget that sight of trucks, FEMA trucks, you know, from the National Guard at different high schools. Couldn't drink it, couldn't touch it, couldn't shower with it. All the produce was thrown out in the grocery stores, restaurants were shut down. It was because of severe algae blooms um, caused by big agriculture and several other factors. And for them to say, well, it's been more severe in the past, it just didn't affect your drinking water, it didn't get to the intake well. So, as if that was okay, you know? Like, what about the ecosystem as a whole? Year after year after year, you hear people making promises. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, but nothing ever happens. And, and clean water is something that everybody should have access to. Our bodies are made up mostly of water. Like, how vulnerable are we that we're not ready for losing our water? Um, and nothing came out of it. So that, I think that was what motivated all of us to start taking action to do something differently. Currently in the United States, we look at nature as property. And like I said, it's property to be exploited for profit. And what Rights of Nature does is it changes that. We look at nature as a living entity that has rights because a healthy environment obviously is what we need. So if nature is healthy, we can become healthy. Lake Erie has the right to live and we have the right to enforce that and protect it. You know, it's a living, breathing, you know, entity that thousands and thousands of animals and plants and, you know, other, all species survive on. If it weren't there, you know, it would be catastrophic. Right now, we don't have the legal standing to step in on a lot of the concerns we have with water quality. So our way of, of um, fixing that is to say Lake Erie has rights and we'll protect those rights. We have to break that industrial model. We have to understand that it's not sustainable. None of this is sustainable. And when we're dead and gone, nature is going to be left. And what are we going to leave for our kids? A group of activists from Toledo saying, this is what we want. This is what we need. A yeah, ragtag group of uh, activists and a bunch of people that care about our community and our community's most valuable resource. So we helped them work with the language, figured out what they wanted to do, what they thought would pr help protect their community and the lake. And then they circulated petitions for two years. We gathered the signatures, um, counted the pavement, talked to people, and, um, and we won. <laughs> we won. And what's interesting, we all know, I think that there's, you know, lots of money being poured into our electoral system and the opposition spent 305000 to defeat the Lake Erie Bill of Rights and the group spent $5,887 and they actually won. They won with 61% of the vote. For all the times that we've been told no and all the times that we've been defeated, um, we pushed through it and it, it fed me more than anything I've ever done environmentally. When I get frustrated with the political process and with the political system, that's something that I will always hold deep in my heart, is that um, true democracy wins out, uh, can win out, um, when it's given the opportunity. The system is probably going to shut it down, and it's not going to um, stay very long on the law books in Toledo, Ohio. But what they want people to know from their effort is that others around the country and in other states should not look at that as a defeat in any way. Because what they've done is shown people a different path. It's not just Toledo. It's Flint. It's reservations. It's, it's Florida. You know, it's the Salish Sea. It's, it's not just you. And once you break out of that bubble, you cry a little bit because it's so overwhelming and then you get to work. They can't take away the point that our community made that we 
care about our lake. We care about our most valuable resource. We care about our water. So I think that would be my greatest hope that somebody would look at what we've done here and say, I want to do that too. And use our model and build off of the work that we've done.